Hello and welcome to our farmers, industry stakeholders and everyone that is interested in farming green maize for profits. And this is Adrian Chivanga from Sitco Zambia. We are here because out of our interventions in producing top quality genetics uh, in, in the various seed varieties that we send to the market, we also couple that with agronomy advice. And uh, out of our agronomy advice, the physical platforms are so limited. We can't reach the 5 million people that are farming in Zambia. So we've decided to go digital. I know on our social media handles, we do post from time to time some helpful tips on how to achieve top yields in your farming enterprises. And so recently, a few weeks ago, we posted about green maize and how you can achieve up to 150,000 kwacha per hectare with best practice. And of course, because you have the right to challenge that, um, most of you commented and challenged, but one of you was very specific and they challenged us and said, come and do this with me and let's see if it really works. And that farmer is Mrs. Lousy Mwamba and we, we are here at Mrs. Lousy Mwamba's <laughs> farm. And thank you so much for welcome, welcoming you. us to the challenge. We yes. are excited to run this journey with you. I'm, I'm also excited. Wonderful. <laughs> we fail, we fail, but we must win because we are... Of course. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said in the comment, uh, if uh, Sitko wins, I win too. Certainly. So, um, we, I have been growing maize for quite a while. Uh -huh. And uh, when you talked about 150,000 in a hectare, I've uh -huh. never achieve that yes and for me it wasn't so much to say that sidco is not uh, giving us quality seeds mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think it's also the way we were approaching um, our farming practices and yes. also how we were growing the maize uh -huh. so my challenge was to say come and show me how to do it the right way yes, yes. so that we are able to then produce what is required mrs mwamba your challenge we accepted because you know in crop production there is what we call the yield equation yes. which our farmers out there have not so much understand. Yeah. The yield equation starts with the genetics and the genetics are in the seed that we produce and I think we do a great job the last 85 years in developing superior genetics that are adaptable to every uh, ecology and are fit for different uses yes. and so we want to come with that uh, first aspect of the equation with the right varieties for green maize. Yes. We'll start from there and so uh, primarily, it's the planning phase and we, we would like to discuss more the planning phase and then get into the journey and we are hoping that here on your farm we can then do some video clips of what we are doing with you so that we can also share it with the farmers out there and so that if they follow through, as we are achieving great things here, they can also achieve great things out there. But the yield equation really is uh, speaks into your uh, challenges that you've highlighted here, the genetics and selection of the correct varieties, yes. and then we talk about the environment in which that variety will be produced. And the environment will include the soil environment and above ground environment. What is there? What is enabling it? What is challenging the seed uh, from uh, reaching optimum potential? And then we talk about the management, yeah. how you and us <laughs> will yeah. then manage these factors Yep. to make sure they are in our favor for the yields we are targeting. Yep. And of course now to address your 150,000 uh, kwacha, <laughs> which is the S aspect, yes. which is the socio-economic or mm. sustainability uh, uh, aspect of the equation. So we will do the genetics aspect, we will do the environmental aspects, the management aspects, and then the uh, social economics, which is the profits mm. and, 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 and sustainability, because you've got to repeat this and it works over again. And over again. You repeat yes, it. Yes, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you've, uh, you actually came out and, uh, and we, we are going on this challenge. For me, it's exciting, but also not just for myself, I think for other farmers as well who've had challenges in growing maize. I mean, from the discussions we've had, I've already seen that there are other areas where there were some gaps mm -hmm. that we were also missing as well. So uh -huh. it's great that we can um, take this out to, you know, to the public. They can see how SIDCO actually um, has a, a best practice uh, standards that we should all follow in order to get the yields that you promise us. Yeah, in most cases, I mean, as farmers, we, we um, for me, if somebody tells me, go and get a base of fertilizer, uh -huh. decompound. 
Exactly. I will not look at all the different mineral elements that are in there. As exactly. far as I'm concerned, I've been told to use decompound in, in maize production and that's all I will look at. And, and I hear you, uh, Mrs. Mwamba, and I understand. It's because it worked 65, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and when it was working, uh, the soils were richer. There was not so many plants that had extracted okay. the nutrition. Yeah. But as we go, you've observed, especially our grandparents, our, our parents that would farm in the village, mm -hmm. and they call you and say, Munda unasila, so tinaku kapo paja, It's because every plant, every cropping enterprise, then extracts everything, mm -hmm. and all you are replenishing maybe is the compound D uh, and urea, which is NPK. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's NPK. The older compound D had sulfur in it, the latter one really has sulfur in it. Mm -hmm. So we are working with three elements and depriving the plant okay. of uh, 13, and wow. we expect for it to still <laughs> give us. No, yeah, uh, no, it makes a lot good, of sense. Good yes. yield, yes. yeah. Thank you for allowing us again to come and collect soil samples on your farm, and we took them for analysis. So I came with a report, and I tell you what, that report has got uh, about 20 parameters. That is jargon. Yes. It's not your, <laughs> it's I not your I place don't know to anything start here, yeah. laboring with what is here. Yes. We will interpret it for you, and then this report helps us understand whether your field, first of all, can grow any maize at all. Okay. And I'm glad to bring the good news to you that, yes, we can grow maize. Thank you. Yeah, it may not be the optimal potential field for maize, but yes, we can grow maize in it and we will achieve somehow what we are aiming to achieve here. So basically, I would like to run with you on just about four or five salient features on this uh, report that are critical, that, uh, that we address in determining uh, nutrition uh, programming. Because what we bring you as a seed and what we feed it uh, is what ultimately gives us uh, the yields we are looking to sell mm -hmm. to give us the, the, the amount of revenue that we have targeted, which okay. is 150,000 kwacha. I'm not forgetting that number <laughs> per hectare. So yeah. here, we submitted this uh, soil, and soil sample and it was analyzed by, I think, one of the two trusted uh, labs that I know. This report has got pH. Um, if you look at your pH, it's saying, what's the number on the pH? 6.7. 6.7 is a slight acid. It's on the border of slight acid going to neutral, mm -hmm. and that's good for maize. Okay. So maize can thrive in anything between 6 and 6.5 for optimal yields, mm -hmm. but 6.7 is good still. We can manage to buffer it down through the journey by a choice of fertilizer products that we choose and, and we can still achieve good nutrition uptake. Okay. And then the next item uh, on there, I would say is the, your level of P, uh, go for that P, Bray 1. Mm -hmm. What does it say? It's at uh, 92. So 92 means you have lots of phosphorus okay. in your soils. Your mm -hmm. soil is so rich in phosphorus, the crops before have not been able to uptake all the, uh, the phosphorus uh, that's in the soil, meaning we will, we will not go very high in our phosphorus recommendation okay. uh, for your soils. In fact, for a 10-ton crop or for a 50,000 good crop size that we are uh, aiming for, that level of phosphorus is good enough for extraction as long as the other uh, aspects that we'll talk about are enabling the plants to uptake it. Okay. And then the other aspect there is your K. Uh, very important, the K there, um, um, the K, your K in green. Yeah. What's the number? It's on against 98. The K? 98 and 98 is, is on the borders of good. Okay. So for K, if you'll have anything between 90 and 120 seated as soil reserve, reserve K, you have some good what amount is, what of is, K. Sorry, what is K? K is for potassium. A like me. So K is potassium. Every okay. plant will need about 16 mineral elements sure. for it to 
give you optimal yields. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, our D compound in urea actually only gives us three of the 16. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's, it's upholding that farmers out there will think that they will get high yields when they've only used uh, three out of 16 okay. uh, mineral elements. Sure. I'll quickly jump to what we are saying EC, EC there. The ECEC is, uh, what does it read? What's the number? So for me, that? it's at 6.1. The 6.1 there. So ECEC is um, acronyms for Effective Cation Exchange Capacity. Okay. So it's the capacity of your soil, basically in layman's language, to hold water or yeah. moisture in okay. the root zone yeah. and to hold all these nutrients in the root zone mm -hmm. without them running away with the with the irrigation mm -hmm. or running off with the irrigation depending on how good or how poor you okay. prepare your land. Mm -hmm. So that, that ratio there is very important to inform me who is your nutrition advisor, yeah. how to structure your fertilizations okay. so that we are not applying all of it that we say the plant needs to give us up our optimal yields yeah. because we have the number that if we are chasing 10 tons per hectare the fertilizer must be this quantity okay. but then how do we structure it in the production journey yeah. we use the norms that have been researched how much the plant is uptaking per time yeah. uh, and then we also use that uh, uh, um, EC EC number there okay. to determine how much, especially nitrogen, okay. we must be applying per time. So that 6.1 is showing us that your soils have the capacity to hold about 60 units of N. Again, that's also jargon, leave mm. it to me. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll program it properly. Okay. When you will come in with urea, when you will come in with whatever um, a base of fertilizer and whatever um, uh, top other dress. top dress fertilizers sure. that we will advise according to what is what we've seen is lacking on your plant, okay. and that is how we'll run the journey. Okay. So what is the what is the threshold? I mean, what's the standard for six point one? What is the best one? When do you know that okay, there's a the problem? The soil here. is rich. Yes. Yeah. So when when that number reduces to something below five, mm -hmm. I begin to say the soil needs a lot of organic matter okay. to improve it. Uh, when that number is around seven, eight, yeah. we have a happy soil. Okay. That number goes together with your clay content, which is on your second page. On your second page, you have your clay, silt and sand mm -hmm. aggregates. What are the numbers against your sand? Sand is 75. And then silt is? Silt is 12. And clay and is? And clay is 13. So because the clay is 13, your, your EC, EC cannot be above 7. Okay. When your clay begins to go towards 15, and uh, the, the ideal clay, uh, and the type of clay too uh, matters, so the ideal clay percentage is 15 to about 25%. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you will find your EC, EC seated anywhere between 7.5 to even 9. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, you can't go and find clay and start putting it in your soil, mm. but we can change the organic matter content, which, which also improves your yes. effective okay. uh, uh, cation exchange capacity. Okay, so, we so is this it. where um, the likes of manure comes in? This is where the likes of manure comes in. This is where the likes of after we've harvested your maize, mm. making sure that we take back all the crop residues into the ground and it decomposes with the soil. Okay. This is where it comes in. This is where no burning. This is another aspect that makes us say, please do not burn. Yeah. Because if you burn and take away and destroy the organic matter, the EC, EC of the soil will, not, will never improve. Mm. And then the microorganisms that are supposed to feed on that um, uh, organic matter from the plants mm -hmm. and also later on help us uh, convert the fertilizers into plant ready nutrition mm -hmm. they are also burnt together with uh, so the um, one thing I've noticed is when people have burnt a lot the mm -hmm. soil becomes much lighter is that what you what you mean yes yes okay. it becomes it it, it it becomes weak actually yes. it becomes poor and until they also move and say Munda Wasil, which is the <laughs> yeah. most common okay. uh, phrase 